the GOP are being outmaneuvered. They're being outmaneuvered. They are being uh, out fundraised. And they are being uh, outgunned, really, uh, in a lot of these battleground states. And this is a problem. And I don't think a lot of people are paying attention to this. It's a problem because, I mean, you're in Florida. It, Florida is the only place it's not because the, and, and even really so much in, in Georgia, because Georgia has done a really good job of, of registering Republicans. And also uh, Florida, the Florida GOP have a great uh, get out the vote mechanism. And they've been, uh, I mean, they've, they've, they've done a really good job, really good job at this. But here's the problem, though. Um, there's not, the RNC has been outsourcing a lot of the ground game and to entities that really don't have any experience with this kind of ground game. And they've been, um, they fell behind in making, staffing up their field offices. It's, this is something I've been talking about since Iowa, by the way. Uh, this is, it's been a, it's been a big issue. And they, I think that the RNC right now needs to do a pulse check because you have in approximately five weeks, people in Pennsylvania are going to start casting their votes for early voting. And he is tied with Kamala Harris in Pennsylvania. This is one of the reasons why I hate early voting to this extent. I'm, if, you're, if you're a college kid or if you're military or something, I understand early voting in some instances. I think it should be a national holiday. However, I think where there exist opportunities to just stuff it, that Republicans ought to be out there doing it until Democrats eliminate it because they got outplayed. The issue in Pennsylvania, that you, I think one of the reasons you haven't seen Kamala Harris very much is because she's doing the Joe Biden approach. They're trying to keep her away from the press because she's just bad in front of the press, and I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, and they're going to do this until early voting starts, I think. And I don't know... What what is going on in the Trump campaign? But they need to get back on it. J.D. Vance has been going out there doing a lot of stuff, but Trump has been going off on Truth Social about Georgia and about this and about that. He has not been his like happy warrior, the 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 candidate that uh, that people respond to. He needs to go back to that. He needs to not be the guy who is bitching on Truth Social about Georgia and Georgia Republicans or about other Republicans that he doesn't like. We don't have time for that now. Five weeks early voting starts, and he's literally tied with Kamala Harris in Pennsylvania. And Trump has to win Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is part of that famed blue wall, which we've talked about. It's where you have like 18 states that's been, that was a phrase that was coined back in like 08, 09. That's been, you know, a number of states, including Michigan, Wisconsin, et cetera. And that's always been a reliable, you know, firewall for Democrats. Uh, Trump did bust through it back in 2016. Uh, he fell short in 2020. Now he's tied here in 2024. And going after your own side over stuff that can wait is not the way to do it. Again, this is a game of Sun Tzu strategy. And if people aren't up to snuff to do Sun Tzu, then get out of the game. Because we're playing to win right now. This is the last exit off the highway, y'all. We have to have unity. And we can't have people going, you know, fight over all this, all this stuff after we've won. But it is too close to be doing it now. I want to know what's happening with the RNC. I want to know why it seems like Scott Pressler is the only one out there. Like Scott Pressler, I think, helped flip Bucks County. But that's about it. I mean, he's one guy. You need a ton of him. You need a lot more Scott Presslers. And this is, this is the, the thing we're looking at right now. You've got the media that's keeping Kamala Harris sheltered. Uh, you've, they're, they're try, they don't know how to really deal with the issue of Tim Walls. And you've, I mean, I'm looking at a lot. I mean, let me give you an example here. I'm looking at some of this, some of this data. So a new national poll, this came out this morning. This, one of the polls that I'm looking at was oversampled Democrats plus three and it, the independents and uh, moderates were, were plus nine. And so I don't know if that's a necessarily reliable poll. I think that's the Marquette one. Um, but even with that, even adjusting for that in the margin of error, they're still like one point apart. Uh, so... We, I mean, you, you got to consider all this stuff. This new national poll that is out, uh, 
it found um, that third party candidates, actually that was the Rasmussen poll, the Rasmussen poll oversampled Democrats plus three. Uh, but still, even with the margin of error, it, they're within a point of each other. Uh, Marquette has a new survey out. Uh, they, When you add third party candidates, Harris goes up plus eight. She's plus five with Trump. Uh, sans third party candidates like RFK and Colonel West, when you add third party candidates in, she's plus eight. And that's interesting because those are the, what have I said? Elections are determined in the margins. Those are the margins right there. So the people, when there's a, an RFK in there, they go to Ward's RFK, and it's not Harris that's losing, it's Trump that's losing. At least that's the latest Marquette measure. And that's only oversampled Democrats by like plus one and a half. So it's, I think it's kind of a smaller sample size, but it's not a totally unreliable survey. This is stuff that we got to consider. Uh, she's, and looking at the Rasmussen poll as well, and like I said, I think so Rasmussen divides people, but he's got Harris 48, Trump 45, and this was a small survey. It's 800 registered voters. Uh, and I still think that it's, I, I, when you look at the, uh, they, they, there wasn't a breakdown for education. It looks like it was, again, it was like only what 9% of these were independent and it was plus three. It's not a huge oversample, but it was a plus three Democrat. The reason I'm break, breaking all of this out is that even when you factor in all of those, they're literally tied within a point. That's insane. That is insane. And this is not, even though it's a small survey size, I keep telling you guys survey after survey after survey. Now, in 2020, the polls were not wrong. I feel like I was one of the few people on air that wasn't blowing smoke up your backsides, not because I wanted to like keep you in a state of agitation, but because I didn't want you to feel as though this was a done deal and you could rely on this narrative of a red wave. The surveys were not wrong in 2020. In fact, you can go back. You can go back and look at the RCP averages for the election for 2020, and what you will see is pretty reflective. The RNC has got to get it together. They are behind. They are getting outmaneuvered. In some of these battleground states, Democrats are out there registering people two to one. They are, they are, I already warned you about the ad buys. They have been buying up all the media time in all these states. They have been flooding the airwaves with ads. Where is the RNC in this? You cannot outsource stuff to third party entities that don't have a record, especially in one of the most contested electoral cycles that we have ever seen when it is so close and everything is on the line you cannot outsource this groundwork to third party entities that have zero previous record of ever doing any kind of groundwork or campaigning or outreach we cannot be doing that right now so the rnc needs to get on the ball like i've said this election is the republicans to lose so we can sit here and talk about Tim Wallace's stolen valor, and we can sit here and talk about how you're going to be just destroyed by taxes and how we'll probably end up in a World War III. And yes, they are going to try to pass some unconstitutional gun control stuff. That is a guarantee. And we can warn and we can talk and we can mock and do all of this stuff, but none of it matters if the RNC doesn't get it together. And as of right now, they haven't.